The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. I'm in San Diego today for an investment conference. All right. Today, Jim is going to discuss the 10-year when the curve inverts. And Jim, last week as we spoke, the two-year, 10-year yield curve inverted for the first time since 2019. What does the inversion mean? Well, a couple of things. First of all, when short-term interest rates go above long-term interest rates, it's a signal from the market that there is risk immediately, which is why they're demanding a premium for yields shorter term than there is longer term. The other thing that could be happening too, which we'll get into in a second, is there can be a bit of a risk off trade in longer term securities because we're worried that there's going to be problems down the line. The other thing I'll say about the yield curve inversion, the morning that we're recording this, it had un technically uninverted. This is not this is not uncommon. When the yield curve inverts, it kind of goes above and below zero for a period of several days to maybe even a few months before it eventually settles into a persistent inverted state. And I usually use the benchmark of net 10 days in a row where the yield curve is negative. And we might be resetting that 10 day clock today, um, April 5th, the day we're recording, because it's back positive again. But so a lot of the comments I'm going to make are predicated on the idea that the yield curve eventually goes inverted on a persistent basis, 10 consecutive days, if not longer, and what that means. So Jim, what does history say? So the yield curve is inverted five times, last week being the fifth time since 1981. So let's run through some of the charts. The first chart shows the first post-81 inversion. And there's a pattern you're going to see in all these charts. The top panel is the two-year, 10-year curve, and the bottom panel is the 10-year yield. So the two-year, 10-year curve inverted into January of 89, and you'll see that the 10-year yield meandered basically sideways since the um, uh, so while the curve was flattening into inverted. And then pretty much the day that it inverted, it only had another, remember, it was at a 9% yield back then. Yeah, it was a different world. It, uh, and it pretty much was done with its rise in yields, the 10-year note. It did peak the day of the maximum inversion, and then yields fell. And seven months later, the shading you see is the beginning of the next recession. So what is the pattern we see here? Sideways while the curve is, in, is flattening to invert, yields peak when we get that persistent inversion and then they fall into the next recession. Now, if you go to the next chart, this next chart shows 1998 to 2000. Yields essentially peaked when the yield curve first went inverted, and they continued to trend lower until the next recession a year later. If you go to the next chart after that, this is the 2004 to 6 inversion. Uh, you could see, again, yields trended sideways as the yield curve was flattening to inverted, and then once they went in June of 06, persistently inverted, you see that yields were done. They went done going up and they went down. And the last one, again, this pattern that you see again, 2019, the last uh, history chart, yields meandered sideways and they peaked with the inversion and then they started down. Now, this one's a little different because the recession was caused by the pandemic. It wasn't a natural outgrowth of economic growth and market signals and everything else. We had an exogenous event come in the middle of it. So I stuck on the top chart uh, in Cyan is the three-month 10-year yield. And you can see that that one persistently went negative in May. So the pattern that you see when the yield curve inverts is the 10-year yield meander sideways. Go to the last chart. This is the current period uh, as of yesterday. 
the 10 year yield, which is in the bottom in green, kind of meanders sideways a little bit. It started up just a bit here in the last uh, couple of months as the curve inverts. Now, once the curve persistently inverts, I think what you'll see is a peak in the 10 year yield. It won't go much higher. The two year yield will keep going up, short rates will keep going up, and the curve will stay inverted. What does that mean? It means uh, a couple of things. So if you go to the next chart, uh, the next chart shows you uh, the, the yield curves, the two-year, 10-year, and the three-month, 10-year yield curves. So you, what you'll see is in blue, the two-year, 10-year curve is inverted, but the three-month, 10-year curve is going in the opposite direction. Every other box on this chart, every other orange box, except for the most right one, shows you that eventually when the cycle is complete, the two-year tenure and the three-month tenure will both invert. Now, how's that work? The very steep curve out to two years is the market signal the Fed is going to raise rates a lot. 10 rate hikes are priced in for this year. So we're going to get to 2.5% on the funds rate. The two-year tenure curve is saying the Fed will break something, that they're going to raise rates too much and they're going to create economic pain maybe even financial market pain or both, or a plumbing problem in the financial markets like 98 with long-term capital or 2019 with the repo market or all three. And so this is why the 10 year tends to rally when the curve is inverted. It is a market signal that we're probably gonna have too tight a policy eventually, not the minute we get it. And remember, we haven't had 10 days in a row. And people pile into the risk off asset of the 10 year and it trades sideways to down, short rates stay up, something eventually breaks, if you go to the next chart. And this is what the Fed is trying to argue too. So the two-year, 10-year yield is on the top and the funds rates on the bottom. And the lines on, the shaded areas of recessions, the lines on the chart are when the Fed first cuts rates. And you'll see when they first cut rates, as I, as I termed it, the, the market does a wheelie. The yield curve just goes vertical straight up because that's the, and I'll use a technical term here for you, that's the oh shit moment. We went too far and we've got to turn around and start cutting rates to try and prevent a recession. And they almost never do. We always always have a recession along the same way. So what is it that usually happens when the curve inverts to 10 year stops going up in yield? It might go up nominally more because we haven't done the 10 days in a row yet where we're persistently inverted. And then it starts to trend down. It's a risk off instrument. It tells you that the marketplace is sensing there's going to be a problem. Short rates stay up because the Fed's going to raise rates too much. When the two year funds rate curve flattens to inverts, that means it's over. The Fed now realizes they went too far. They turn around, they start to cut rates to try and prevent a recession, and they don't. So unfortunately, this is not a positive story, at least what the market is telling us. Lastly, what's the pain point it's going to take? So if we look at the last uh, graphic here, this I stole from Bloomberg. Um, every rate hike cycle is, uh, every yield curve inversion is in the middle of a rate hike cycle. Or in market parlance, it's a bear flattener. Rates are rising and the yield curve is flattening. Every single time the yield curve inverts, the Fed is raising rates. So how many days after the first rate hike does the two-year tenure eventually invert? Well, Bloomberg was using Friday. 16 days is when we got the first inversion. Far and away the shortest period ever that we've seen. Well, what does that mean? Typically, the yield curve inversion is the market thinks we're going to have a problem. Fed policy is going to be too tight. It only took one rate hike in 16 days for it to invert. So the signaling here is, is the market is going to, the market is saying the Fed's going to go too much, cause a lot of pain, and maybe a recession. Well, what's too much? In the, you can't be precise on this, but the answer is not very much. It only took one rate hike to invert the curve. So the terminal funds rate that the Fed is looking at at two and three eighths, or the market is looking at at two and three quarters, so that would be where they think the Fed's going to raise rates. The answer is yes. A two handle on the funds rate can be enough to cause severe pain in the market. We don't have to go to four or five. We don't have to say, well, the inflation rate's eight. Do we have to take interest rates back to eight? We'll break things far before we get there. 
the breakage of the economy, the breakage of the financial markets will slow demand for stuff and will slow inflation. So again, uh, this is not a positive story, but that's always what the story is with the yield curve. The other story you always get with the yield curve, I like to jokingly say is, is you get all the PhDs to come out and say it won't it won't work this time, and it almost always does work every time they come out and say it. Now, the one caveat I would give you is the Fed's gigantic balance sheet and all of the quantitative easing might have distorted that signal. Okay, that might have happened. I don't think that's the case, but I'm open to the idea, and we'll see how this plays out. But short of that, the Fed QE messed this up. What the market is signaling is there's going to be a problem. Now, the problem could still be a year away, uh, the, you know, and we still haven't really persistently inverted the yield curve. And a signal that you've also got another problem is the 10-year yield will stop going up. And then once the two-year funds rate curve flattens, that means that the Fed says, oh, oh we went too far. Time to start cutting rates to stop the recession, and it'll be too late at that point. So I wish I had more positive news. But unfortunately, that's what I think of inverted yield curve means and what the 10-year does when you get an inverted yield curve. It tends to go sideways to rally. Well, thank you, Jim, for your thoughts today. We appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We are client-driven. If you have any questions or feedback for future topics, please let us know. For further information on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day, everyone.